Hello. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to make your own leak light. And a leak light is essentially a light source that you put inside your saxophone um, in a darkened room, and then you can close the keys and you can look and see where the light comes through. That's where you know you have leaks. So this is the very first leak light that I made. Um, works okay. It's really ugly. Um, it's basically uh, four white LEDs. They're wired in parallel. And there's a couple of uh, two-watt resistors in series with them uh, to drop the voltage so we don't burn up the less. Uh, I think I used three 100 watt, uh, or three 2 watt, three 100 ohm 2 watt uh, resistors uh, for this combination and I'm pairing it with a 12 volt uh, wall work that I salvaged off some long bond piece of equipment. Um, that seemed to be about the right uh, voltage drop uh, to get the correct brightness on the lights. Um, this isn't an electronics lesson. Uh, this is a lesson about leak lights. But, so this is one that I made. Um, but I'm going to show you how to make a better one. Um, but let me just show you what this one does. The nice thing about this one is it's kind of small in diameter. Um, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but the uh, LEDs um, I put everything inside a piece of plastic tubing and then sealed it at the end with hot glue. Uh, so it's sealed up nice and tight. And um, the two leads that carry the current inside were two pieces uh, of enameled wire, small enameled wire. Um, anyway, I'm going to plug it in. And uh, you can see it uh, lights up the, like a light stick. Here is my soprano that I reviewed in another video, and my over exuberant uh, dog um, is uh, quite a uh, uh, happy pup. Uh, gave the horn a good knock with his tail. I think that's what happened, and uh, knocked it out of adjustment. And I think that with these inexpensive horns, the metal is so thin that uh, adjustment's a problem. You have to be careful and uh, very easy to go out of adjustment. Don't let someone else play it on. You know, if you've got an adjustment, don't let someone else play it. Uh, if someone who's heavy hand, heavier handed than you plays it, it's probably going to go out of adjustment um, for you. Anyway, next time you play it. Um, anyhow, mine was out of adjustment. I got to a rehearsal and I had to play soprano and nothing would come out but slots. And... Uh, I happened to have a small flashlight on my keychain. I stuck it inside and I could see the leaks. I was able to do a temporary repair with a cigarette lighter. I don't, re don't recommend using cigarette lighters on your horn either. Uh, but I was able to do it in an emergency. Essentially, you put the leak light in inside the horn. And then you can look. You can see here the light coming through. And... As you close the keys, or you look at the uh, normally closed keys, uh, you can see where light comes through, or doesn't come through. And it's hard to see here in the video, but um, you'll see it quite clearly when you do this for yourself. Um, you'll see little spaces where light comes through. And uh, essentially what you want to do is very, very carefully paint the metal cut where that pad is, where you see the leak. And then you can manipulate the pad very, very carefully. Do not puncture the pad. Um, if you're not sure about what you're doing and it's an expensive horn, don't do it. Take it to a repairman. Take it to someone who knows what they're doing. I'm not a repairman. Uh, this is an inexpensive horn. I'm totally comfortable working on it. If I screw it up, I can take it to my repairman and help tell me who screwed it up, but he'll fix it. Um, if I really screwed it up, it was only a $250 one to begin with. I would not touch a vintage summer Mark VI. I wouldn't touch anybody else's horn. Um, but what I'm showing you is how you can troubleshoot your own horn with simple leak light. And they're really easy to make. 
So again, I made this one out of four LEDs uh, wired in parallel with series resistors to drop the voltage and limit the current. And uh, it works pretty well, especially in the small bore of this printer. Now, the one I'm going to show you next, I was walking through Home Depot the other day, and they had these 12 volts fluorescent under the counter battery powered lights. And uh, one of these jobs. They give you some sticky paper with them. And the idea is that you stick it under a counter somewhere under your workbench and, and it provides a, a source of light that you don't have to power, plug in any. There is an adapter on the end, a standard uh, DC coaxial uh, uh, power plug. Um, and I have loads and loads and loads of 12 volt wall works. This is 12 volts. You can also put uh, eight AA batteries in. Um, that's 12 volts. Um, eight AA batteries is 12 volts. But my intention was to take the tube out and um, connect a wire to the contacts inside. There's only one contact on the tube on each side. Um, and then the circuitry inside provides the needed uh, voltage bump to uh, set off the, uh, the fluorescent tube. Again, this is not a lesson in electronics, but um, essentially that's what happens. There's a, uh, a bump in the voltage, and uh, that, that allows the, the tube to work. You can't just plug a battery into it, it won't work very well. So, um, I, uh, I used a, a, a pair out of a Category 5E network cable. This is the orange and white pair. It's the most tightly wound pair, and I kept it wound. And that's what I'm using to go back to the base in here. And you can see it has a, a coaxial power adapter on the end, in with it. And uh, I took one of my wall warts and I plugged it in. And I'm going to plug it into the power. And there's also an on-off switch um, on here. You can turn it off. And uh, I would recommend just unplugging it. Um, but anyway, I left the light nice and on the cord so that um, you know, I don't have any problem um, getting the light in or retrieving it. And uh, the end is taped securely so that the uh, cord won't pull out or pull off. And I basically just use a normal solder iron and some, some 6040 uh, rather core electronic solder to solder um, the orange-white wire to one end and the orange wire to the other. And then uh, I made a little hole in the end of the base unit here. I uh, put the wire in, tie a little knot so it can't slip back through. And then I soldered the orange to one terminal and the orange white to the other terminal inside this unit. So, to turn that back on, now this one's a little wide for the Soprano. It doesn't go all the way, quite all the way down. Um, so that's a nice thing about having that little one. But it's really long, so that's kind of a cool feature because I want to really, really check the horn out. And uh, I've uh, been working on this one. I've had most of the, the issues resolved. Uh, I didn't do much. And um, probably one of the keys to working on any instrument is to do as little as possible um, to make it right. So there are some adjustment screws. Um, one of the nice things about this inexpensive horn that surprised me is there's lots of adjustments. So there's a lot of things you can adjust just by slightly turning the screw. And um, if you're turning the screw, um, even an eighth of a turn is a lot. Um, a quarter of a turn is a whole lot. So it's really, really tiny adjustments, especially on a soprano. Um, if you're turning more more than an eighth of a turn, something's not right. And uh, um, this isn't really a lesson in, in uh, instrument repair, but the pads, you can see um, the light there. And then um, 
you see the cuffs, metal cuffs, and then the pads uh, under the cuffs. They're held in with, um, in the old days they used shellac. Uh, my repairman uses hot glue. Uh, I suppose there's different people that use different things. But whatever they use, when you heat it, it melts. It softens. And the idea is to heat the cup, the metal part that the pad is in. And then you move the pad gently. You don't puncture it. You don't use a pin or something that's going to put a hole in it. But you can move it with a plastic tool, a plastic electronic uh, screwdriver. Um, you can make something, a piece of a uh, cut off piece of wire tie, for instance. Um, and then you want to gently move that pad, either circularly in the cup or move it in and out of the cup, just until it seals that hole uh, where the light is escaping. Then you have to be careful, don't go too far, because if you go too far, you're going to throw something else out of adjustment. So you just want to get that little bit where the light's coming through. Anyway, uh, so it's really a lesson in how to fix a horn, more or less in how to make your own leak light. And uh, I'm going to leave the wisdom of repair and um, caution in uh, uh, working on something you may not really know what you're doing on up to you. Uh, use your best judgment. I am not, like I said, I'm not a repairman. I felt comfortable working on this one, and if I had an emergency on a gig and no other choice, uh, that's what I would do. I would work on the horn. But uh, this is really what you need to diagnose it. And you can at least pop this in there and know what you're dealing with. It's always good to have the right tools, and uh, a lead light is a wonderful thing to have if you're a saxophone player. Take care.